Yo, what's going on, people? How's everyone doing? Happy Friday, math nerds. All right, I think it's ready to show my camera. Today, we are entering the matrix. First trig test tomorrow. That's awesome. Or not tomorrow, next week. I hope it goes well. Okay, as I mentioned, you guys already know the drill. Friday, it is off trail. And I have some really cool material for you guys. It's going to be a little different, so I'm hoping you guys are hanging on for the ride. Um, I'm really excited about this. So today, it's just all about learning new methods, learning new ideas of how to integrate specific polynomials. If you see the title of this live, it is 1 over x to the fifth plus 1. That's kind of what we're going to explore today. But I'm going to show you how we're going to start off with that. Okay. So I really, again, you'll see why we're going to enter the matrix, but I want to explore how to integrate that polynomial. We already know how to do this rational function. We technically could easily do both of these. We can use partial fraction decomposition. But then we start getting to the higher level ones, something like the last two here. That's exactly what we're going to do today, okay? And I'm going to show you how I think we can go ahead and solve this. We're going to use the Euler formula, and we're going to use the De Moore's theorem. Let me go ahead and explain both of those to you. So we have a complex number. Let's just say any complex number, a plus bi. So we are now in the complex plane. As I mentioned, we are in the matrix today. So if you have any complex number, that could be written as some number e to the i theta cosine, whoops, r cosine theta plus i sine theta, where r is the length of this value, or you can say it's the distance from the origin to the point, and theta is the angle that is formed by the x-axis. Okay. Oh, you guys want to do derivatives? I am totally down for that. I don't know why I keep reading the chat, but I'm totally down for that. We can do derivatives, but let me just kind of introduce this stuff. If you guys really want to push for derivatives, keep let me know in the chat. Okay, today's off trail. We're going to explore whatever, but really, I was hoping that we can be in the matrix and explore some integrals. Okay, so as I mentioned, this is how we are able to find certain values in the complex plane. We use Euler's formula, and then we're going to use... De Moore's theorem. I probably spelled it wrong. But the way that works is if we have a complex number z to the n, and that's calculated using this identity, then we can go ahead and take the square root of this. And that's simply going to become the square root of the r value and then cosine of theta over n plus i sine of theta over n. Of course, there's going to be a couple more uh, restrictions to that. But I'm going to show you why we are studying this. So let me know in the chat if you guys have never heard of this. Okay. Let me know if you guys have never heard of uh, Euler's formula or if you have. And if so, that's great. If not, just try to keep up a little bit, okay? So here we go. If we kind of understand this, I think we'll be good. I'm going to take off. Well, actually, no, I'll keep the glasses on since, again, we are in the matrix. So let's go ahead and explore a specific integral, okay? Or actually, before we even do that, let me go ahead and give you a value here on the, this is the complex plane. So this is A, this is B. So let's just say, for example, I have a point 2. Hmm. Actually, let's go ahead and just put some random point over here. Let's just say this coordinate is a 1 plus i. Okay? So we're going to go ahead and turn this. Oh, you just wait. You just wait. I know this is basic, but we're going to go ahead and talk about why we're going to solve this. So if I have a value like this, okay, I can go ahead and find the value r, which is just the modulus of this complex value. And that's going to be written as 1 squared plus 1 squared, or this is just root 2. 
and the theta can be written as the tan inverse of the y value, or in this case, a complex value, which is 1 over 1, and it looks like this is going to be pi over 4. So this number, i plus 1 plus i, can be written as 1 times cosine of pi over 4 plus i sine of pi over 4. Or maybe I got that wrong. Okay, I was just trying to give you an idea here. But let me just go ahead and show you why I'm even trying to explore this, okay? We're going to go ahead and talk about the integral 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. Now, I know this is going to be arctan. We already know this is going to be arctan, but we're going to talk about why this is, or I want to write it a little different. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and simplify this, and I'm going to go ahead and use some partial or just factor this out using complex numbers. So this is going to be x plus i times x minus i. Now, just to show you why this is the same value, is if I actually multiply this out using the FOIL method, I'm going to get x squared minus ix plus ix minus i squared. The ix's cancel out, so we're left with x squared minus negative 1, because i squared is negative 1, and then we have x squared plus 1. Okay, so far so good. Again, I already know this is going to be arctan, but let me now, now that we kind of agree that this is actually how this can be factored out, I'm going to rewrite the i using Euler's formula. Now, i is up here. Okay, i is going to be up here, and that value can be written as e to the i pi over 2. So I'm going to go ahead and write this out. Now I have integral of 1 over x plus i, or e to the i pi over 2, times x minus e times i pi over 2. And then we're going to go ahead and use a partial fraction decomposition for this. So now this integral is going to become a over x plus e i pi over 2 plus b times x minus e i pi over 2. And we can go ahead and uh, continue with our partial fractions to find what the a and b value is going to be. So this is going to be a times x minus e i pi over 2 plus b times x plus e to the power of i pi over 2, and that's equal to 1. And now we're going to go ahead and use the, uh, shoot, I forget what people call this. It's like the, the hidden method. They're going to plug in a value for x, or we're going to make x equal to i e to the i pi over 2, so that when we plug it into the formula, the a value is going to go away. This is going to be a times 0 plus b 2 e i to the pi over 2 is equal to 1. Cover-up method. Yes, thank you. It's called the cover-up method. And so that's going to tell us that b is equal to 1 over 2 e to the i pi over 2. And we could do that same work. Let me go ahead and write it on the bottom. If we do x is equal to negative e i to the pi over 2, then that's going to tell us that a times negative 2 e to the i pi over 2 is equal to 1. And that's going to tell us that a is going to be 1 over 2 e to the i pi over 2. Let me go ahead and make some space on the blackboard here because we are almost going to be finished with this. And again, the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm trying to get to find the integral of 1 over x to the fifth plus 1. That is a big, that is a big uh, integral that has been bothering me, and I kind of thought this method was kind of interesting. Whoops. Okay, so as we mentioned, a is going to be 1 over negative 2 e to the i pi over 2. And so now our integral is going to be integral of negative 1 over 2 e to the i pi over 2 over x plus e to the i pi over 2 plus 1 over 2 e to the i pi over 2 all over x minus e to the i pi over 2 dx. Optimization is really fun. You'll like it. What's the purpose of this integral? I'm going to show you why this is the case. Let me finish this up, 
okay? This integral is now going to become negative 1 half e to the i pi over 2, natural log of absolute value x plus e to the i pi over 2, plus 1 over 2 e to the i pi over 2, natural log of x minus e to the i pi over 2, plus c. Now I know that this is technically, it's an easy tangent problem, but we can rewrite this. Okay, we can rewrite this using these values. So if we know Euler's formula, and now we're going to talk about De Moore's formula in a second, we are going to be able to solve for this. Okay, so we understand, hopefully we can kind of keep up with how I did this. Now we're going to do 1 over x to the cubed plus 1. I'm going to uh, remove my, head, uh, my glasses here because it got a little crazy. Way too dark for me. 1 over x cubed plus 1 dx. You can def well, I don't think you can do u substitution. Yeah, don't worry. Again, this is off trail math. Fridays are just off trail. So anything goes. And I just wanted to cover this. I'm in here Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. Tuesdays, we do integration Bs. Thursdays, we're going to cover something specific. So if whether it's u substitution, uh, I believe yesterday we did series. And then today, we're just going to do something random. And yes, this will be uploaded on YouTube as soon as this is over. Okay, now let's talk about this, all right? The very first thing that I want to do is I am not going to use the uh, sum of cubes here. I am first going to check what the roots of these are. x cubed is equal to, well, let's just start off with x cubed plus 1 is equal to 0. I'm going to go ahead and move the 1 to the other side. Ah, here we go x cubed is equal to negative 1. And if you recall, negative 1 in the complex plane is there where I drew it, on the real axis and then the negative side. And that could technically be written as e to the i, and now I'm going to use pi plus 2 pi n. Okay, this is what we call Euler's formula. No, just raw. You can, you know, fast forward or play it at two times the speed. Okay, so now that negative one can be written as e to the i pi plus 2 pi n. So then now I have x cubed is equal to e to the i pi plus 2 pi n. And now I'm going to take the cubic root of this. And if you guys remember De Moore's theorem or de Moore's, de Moore's. It's not, it, it is another partial fraction of composition, but I'm trying to get to how. By the way, guys, here's the goal. I want to be able to integrate 1 over x to the fifth plus 1 dx. That's going to take a little more time, but I'm just going to show you why. De Mauve, ah. Okay, yes, it's pretty advanced. Today is off trail. Fridays, anything goes. So I just wanted to cover something like this. On Tuesdays, we do integration Bs. Wednesdays, Thursdays, I'm sorry, we do something specific. So yesterday, we were doing series, which led to some Taylor series. But anything that you guys want to review, Fridays is just a little off trail. This is, this is not supposed to be something that everyone covers. I just wanted to introduce something unique that I thought would be fun. Okay, so going back to this, x is now going to equal to e to the i pi over 3 plus 2 pi n over 3. That is de Mauve's theorem. Okay? So if I calculate all three roots, it's going to be e to the i pi over 3. That's if n was equal to 0. And then we're going to have e to the i pi. That's if n is equal to 1. And then we're going to have e to the i uh, 5 pi over 3. Okay, now if we continued, this will, be, this will be the only value or the only three values. So now we know these are our roots. So our integral can be written like this. x minus e to the i pi over 3 times x minus e to the i pi times x minus e to the i 5 pi over 3 dx. And now I can go ahead and use a partial fraction decomposition for this. Okay? Again, this is helping us find the integral of 1 over x cubed plus 1, or 1 over x 
x to the fifth plus one. So let me go ahead and write our partial fraction decomposition. This is going to be a over x minus i pi over 3 plus b over x minus e to the i pi. By the way, you notice that second value, x minus e to the i pi, that's basically x plus 1. That was one of the roots. And then plus c over x minus e to the i 5 pi over 3. All right, let's go ahead and make some space here on the blackboard because now we're going to do our partial fractions. And then from this, maybe we can just jump straight to the i, the integral of 1 over x to the fifth plus 1. So now when we continue with our partial fractions, we're going to get a times x minus e to the i pi times x minus e to the i 5 pi over 3 plus b x minus e to the i pi over 3 times x minus e to the i 5 pi over 3. And as you can see, this gets really long. It's plus c, x minus e to the i pi over 3 times x minus e to the i pi. And the whole thing is supposed to equal to 1. That's our numerator. All right, let's go ahead and use the cover-up method. This is what Hindi man was telling us. So for the cover-up method, let's go ahead and make, um, let's start off by making x equal to e to the i pi. Okay, so when you plug it into the first one, when you plug it into that first term, this one will become zero, that first parenthesis, so that whole thing goes away. When you plug it into the second one, that's not going to go away. But if you plug it into the third, you'll notice that that second fraction goes away, so our c goes away. So what we have now is we have b times e to the i pi minus e to the i pi over 3 times e to the i pi minus e to the i 5 pi over 3 all equal to 1. So then b is going to equal to 1 over these entire terms. As you can see, this is already taking a lot of work, but that's exactly what we're going to need to use if we are trying to find all the integral of 1 over x to the power of 5 plus 1. Now let's go ahead and again make some space in the blackboard here because we need to continue finding the values of a, the values of b, and then the values of c. Or we found the value of b, I'm sorry. We need to find the values of a and the values of c. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of highlight this so I don't forget that this is my b. And again, I'm just going to kind of show the work here, but if you were to play around with this, Okay, don't forget that I post this on YouTube. You can definitely watch this a little slower if you wanted to, but I'm going to find the value of A already. Or let's go ahead and using the cover method, I am going to plug in. I am going to make X equal to E to the I 5 pi over 3. And what that does is eliminates my A value. It eliminates my B value. And that leaves me with C is equal to 1 over e to the i 5 pi over 3 minus e to the i pi over 3 times e to the i 5 pi over 3 minus e to the i pi. I'm going to go ahead and erase the, the marks that I have made in the a value here. By the way, guys, again, Fridays, we are entering the matrix. We are introducing a new method here, but this is really exciting. I'm really, really excited to show you guys how we can integrate 1 over x to the fifth plus 1. Okay, so we found the value of c, and then now we got our last term. Go ahead and plug in uh, e to the i pi over 3. That cancels out my b value. That cancels out my c value, and that leaves me with a is equal to 1 over e to the i pi over 3 minus e to the i pi times e to the i pi over 3 minus e to the i 5 pi over 3. And now we can now we found all the values for the partial fraction. We can go ahead and start integrating this or putting this into our integral. 
And as you know, we're making more space on the blackboard. I know this is pretty intense, but again, Fridays, it's all about just going off trail. You might be, you are going to be learning DeMauve's theorem. You will learn that for sure in a couple weeks. All right, guys, here we go. So our integral, I know it's a little hard to see, but it is here. This was our partial fraction. So then now what we have is we have this entire value for A. I'm probably going to have to split this up into lines. We have our integral 1 over x cubed plus 1 was equal to the A value, which is 1 over e to the i pi over 3 minus e to the i pi times e to the i pi over 3 minus e to the i 5 pi over 3. Integral of 1 over x minus e to the i pi over 3. That is the first one. And then we still have plus. Now we have the b integral, which is 1 over e to the i pi minus e to the i pi over 3 times e to the i pi minus e to the i 5 pi over 3 integral of 1 over x minus e to the i pi dx. Hopefully you guys can kind of see this pattern here. And now we're going with the c. So this is e to the i 5 pi over 3 minus e to the i pi over 3 times e to the i 5 pi over 3 minus e to the i pi integral of 1 over x minus e to the i 5 pi over 3 dx. Whoa, more space on the blackboard and we're going to finish this off. This will be the final integral for 1 over x cubed plus 1. So now we can finally say that our integral 1 over x cubed plus 1 dx is going to equal to our a value, which is 1 over, it's this part right here, 1 over e to the i pi over 3, whoops, minus e to the i pi times e to the i pi over 3 minus e to the i 5 pi over 3 natural log of x minus e to the i pi over 3. And then we have plus. It is this value that I'm circling in red. That's going to be 1 over e to the i pi minus e to the i pi over 3 times e to the i pi minus e to the i 5 pi over 3 natural log of x minus e to the i pi and then this last one, which is our C value, plus, whoops, let's continue doing it in blue, 1 over e to the i 5 pi over 3 minus e to the i pi over 3 times e to the i 5 pi over 3 minus e to the i pi natural log of x minus e to the i 5 pi over 3. And then don't forget your plus C at the end. That is our integral at the end, guys. That is the integral for 1 over x cubed plus 1. Pretty exciting, to be honest. And you can kind of see a pattern. In every single denominator, we just have a variation of every single value. One of the, the roots minus the other root times one of the roots minus the other root. So it's, you're just making up for the whole thing. And then so now what we're going to do... We're going to kind of, now that we hopefully can see a little shortcut, again, you could take a screenshot of this, or if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, once it's uploaded, you can pause the video, but you can see a pattern here. And that's exactly what we're going to do when we integrate 1 over x to the fifth plus 1. Okay? So look at that pattern. Every denominator there is the root minus one of the other roots times that same root minus the other root that's missing. So you're always accounting for it. And then you have the natural log of x minus e to the i pi over 3. Now find the real solutions. Yeah. Okay. Let me finish this off and then I'm going to read some of the comments here. Or now we can continue doing that same process by 1 over x to the 4th plus 1. We just need to find all 4th roots using DeMauve's theorem, and then we can write the equation. 
So let's just kind of do that now. Again, the way you do this is you set the bottom equal to zero. You want to find those roots because you want to use partial fractions. I'm not going to do all that work anymore. I'm just going to kind of show you how we started off. X to the fourth is equal to negative one. And if you recall from the complex plane, negative one is here. And so that means that this could be written as e to the i pi plus 2 pi n. And so that means that x to the fourth is equal to e to the i pi plus 2 pi n. And we're going to go ahead and take the fourth root. And so now we have x is equal to, and now we have to do every combination. So this is e to the i pi over 4 plus this is just pi n over 2. Again, this is DeMauw's theorem. So let's go ahead and figure out each value. If n was equal to 0, then this will be i just pi over 4. Then we have if n was equal to 1, then this will be i. Uh, this will be i 3 pi over 4. And then we have if n was equal to 2, and that's going to be i 7 pi over 4. And then we have the last one. If n was equal to, wait, I just want to double check that that is correct, 2, no, 5 pi over 4, my bad. And then we have the last one, if n was equal to 3. And then this will be i e to the i 7 pi over 4. Oh, I just wanted to make sure I got those all correct. Yeah, basically, don't, again, Fridays are off trail. Okay, so we are doing something ridiculously crazy, but on Tuesdays, we do integration Bs. On Thursdays, we do something very specific. So yesterday, we were doing series. We were doing McLaurin and Taylor series, and then today, Fridays are just off trail, so anything goes. Okay, so these are our roots, and if you recall, we can go ahead and split this up again as A over x minus e to the i pi over 4 plus b over x minus e to the i 3 pi over 4 plus c over x minus e i 5 pi over 4 plus d over x minus e i 7 pi over 4. Now, can you imagine trying to do partial fraction decomposition on this? No effing way. There is absolutely no way that we're going to do that. But if you recall, we kind of talked about a pattern here, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Okay, so now that we kind of recognize the pattern, we're going to go ahead and show what this integral is. Okay, so for the first one, remember that I mentioned this is always going to be 1 over that root, the value that makes that uh, the root undefined, e i to the pi over 4 minus the other roots. So e to the i 3 pi over 4 times e to the i pi over 4 minus e to the i 5 pi over 4 times e to the i pi over 4 minus e to the i 7 pi over 4. And at the end, we just have an ln. I'm actually just going to put it on top. ln of x minus e to the i pi over 4. And we continue. That was for our a value. And in our b value, I guess we can already put the natural log. And this is all a sum, by the way. i 3 pi over 4 over, and then now we show every single value, e to the i 3 pi over 4 minus e to the i pi over 4 times e to the i 3 pi over 4 minus e to the i 5 pi over 4 and then times e to the i 3 pi over 4 minus e to the i 7 pi over 4. And then we got two more that we have to account for. That's the c and the d. So let me go ahead and make this a little smaller. Again, if you don't recognize the pattern, then we are going to be stuck doing partial fraction decomposition, and that just doesn't sound very fun at all, does it? Okay, so let me go ahead and move this. Well, I keep making it bigger, and there we go. Much better. Okay. And so now we do the C value. And that is natural log of X minus E to the I 5 pi over 4 all over every single combination of values here. Minus E to the I pi over 4 times E to the I 5 pi over 4 minus E to the I 3 pi over 4 
times e to the i 5 pi over 4 minus e to the i 7 pi over 4. And now we got the last one, guys. That is the d value. Natural log of x minus e to the i 7 pi over 4. And then the whole thing is e i 7 pi over 4 minus e to the i 5 pi over 4. e i 7 pi over 4 minus e i 3 pi over 4 times e to the i 7 pi over 4 minus e to the i 5 pi over 4. And that whole thing is plus c. That is our entire integral. That is the integral for x to the power of 4 plus 1, which is the value that we had up on top. How fun. And this is going to lead us to 1 over x to the fifth plus 1. No, you don't need this for calc 2. The, you do need partial fractions in composition, but again, I'm just introducing a different way of solving this. Christian, you're saying I'm doing too much, but let me show you how we're going to be able to integrate the next problem. 1 over x to the fifth plus 1. Or better yet, I can give you any single problem now. 1 over x to the power of n plus 1, and we can find that integral. But I'm curious, if I have 1 over x to the fifth plus 1, before I even do the method that I just introduced, I'm curious how you guys will go about solving this. And don't tell me you will, you'll go on uh, uh, Wolfram uh, or whatever that's called, because that answer is so generic. <laughs> Check it. Mm -hmm. Yes, please check out Chegg and follow Chegg Math. I'm actually sponsored by them, and I, I post videos for them. So give them some love. Chegg Math. You got to check them out. But look at that, this integral. What can you do? The Feynman method. Okay, Parker, you're thinking the Feynman method. I'm curious how we could even start solving that. Yeah, so if you do Warframe, you know, you plug it in, and it gives you the answer. But then how do you derive it? How did you get it? That is the problem. Yeah, Will Parker said the Feynman method, and I'm curious what we can do. I mean, if we started off doing, you know, f of alpha, what would that value be? Are you thinking x to the alpha plus 1, or should we introduce uh, another a value? Okay, so factor denominator. So we can definitely try that, and I'm going to show you why this becomes, like, pretty tedious. So I'm going to factor it out. Okay, I'm going to factor out, <laughs> graph the function e value at this point. Yeah, you can, you can do that, but you notice how you have to graph it. We can't graph. I'm not graphing stuff here, but I'm thinking factor a denominator. I'm going to show you how we can start factoring the denominator. So I'm going to use the rational root theorem, and I'm going to divide. Think of this as x to the fifth plus 0x to the fourth plus 0x cubed plus 0x squared plus 0x plus 1. So if I factor out, I have 1 as my coefficient, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. And then on the outside, I have negative 1. Or yes, negative 1, because that's the only root for this function. If we use synthetic division, we're going to get negative 1. This is negative 1. This is 1, 1. And then we get negative 1. This is 1. And then this is going to be negative 1. This is, uh, wait, did I do my math wrong here? Negative 1, negative 1. This is positive 1, positive 1. Negative 1, ah, negative 1 right here. There we go. Positive 1, positive 1, negative 1, 0. Awesome. So our remainder is 0. So that, now what we're going to have is we have this new value. x plus 1 times x to the 4th minus x cubed plus x squared minus x plus 1. And then the whole thing is dx. Now what are we thinking? Partial fraction decomposition? Christian said Ruffini method. I don't think I ever heard of that, to be honest. Oh, see, that's crazy how they call it synthetic division, but it's called the Ruffini method. Okay, so that's the, you're the second person who tells me that. It's funny that everyone calls it by their, their proper terms, and we're over here just us Americans calling them by something uh, something different. Okay, U sub. Someone say U sub, but what can we make U sub? <laughs> okay, partial fractions. So I'm going to do this. I, I've been working on this one, and I have, and I did try this method. So if we use partial fractions, 
then this entire integral that we have is just going to become this. Let's go ahead and start writing it in green. A over x plus 1 plus c, or no, bx cubed plus cx squared plus dx plus e all over x to the fourth minus x cubed plus x squared minus x plus 1. Yo. I mean, just imagine if we, if we went, continue with our partial fractions. So that means that a times x to the fourth minus x cubed plus x squared minus x plus 1 plus x plus 1 times bx cubed plus cx squared plus dx plus e. That whole thing has to be equal to 1. Now I did this, and I found our values. You know, in terms of uh, problems, I will love to do that. I'm thinking of doing like a little dis uh, Discord or perhaps maybe, you know, I do have an app that we can, um, everyone can join. But I'm curious what everyone would prefer, whether it's a Discord or just an email. Totally up to you guys. But if you have a problem right now, you can more than, uh, you can email me if you'd like. Okay, yeah, we can definitely do a Discord. That'd be kind of fun. I'm hoping that the more uh, people log on here, the more support we get, then we can easily have like a homework, you know, a homework powwow. Okay, so Nam, you're, I'm curious about that. How can we complete, how can we completely factor the bottom? That's something that has been killing me because I have not been able to try to, or I haven't been able to factor out the bottom. And it's kind of frustrating for me. I don't know why that I haven't been able to do that. I've been trying grouping and that just doesn't seem to work. So if everyone has an idea of how to do this, let me know. But I'm just going to continue here. But if I see something in the chat that uh, proves otherwise, then we'll, we'll run with it. But what we're going to have, we are going to be able to find our values of A, B, C, D, and E. But we're going to run into some problems. Okay, The method that I did, I could already find the solution, although it's going to be in, um, in complex form. Yeah, definitely try to si simplify the denominator. But again, I'm curious what that bottom denominator can be simplified to because I don't I don't think I know how to do that unless let's just try it out real quick x to the fourth minus x cubed plus x squared minus x plus one again I tried factoring out can that help x cubed times x minus one plus x times x minus one plus one I wouldn't know how to continue factoring that out So I think that's an issue that we run in or we run into. So let me just go back to this partial fractions. I'm going to multiply everything out for the sake of, of you know, of doing this because everyone said partial fractions. But again, we already know the method. It's just going to take us a little longer. So let's go ahead and try that. So let's go ahead and distribute the A into everything inside that parentheses. That's going to become A X to the fourth. Let's continue with green. That's going to be A X to the fourth minus A X cubed plus ax squared minus ax plus a. And then that next one, unfortunately, we have to use distribution property. So I'm going to multiply all the x's into everything. So that's going to become bx to the fourth plus cx cubed plus dx squared plus e to the x. And then I have to distribute the 1 into everything. And that leaves me with bx cubed plus cx squared plus dx plus e. And so now what I'm going to do before I even continue, I'm going to try to group all the values that have x to the fourth. And that looks like the only one is a and b. Let's go ahead and group all the ones that have uh, x cubed. So that looks like it's negative a looks like it's C, and then I see a B. Okay, let's go ahead and group all the ones that have X squared. That's A. Looks like it's D, and then we have C. And then we have to group all the values that have X's. So negative A, E, and D. And then we have to just get the constants, which is A and E. 
And don't forget, this whole thing is equal to 1. You know, math can be complicated and it, it could be frustrating, but watching people just try different methods, it's kind of fun. And then you learn like, oh, that's what you could do. I mean, honestly, it's like watching someone uh, play a sport or, you know, watching someone play video games. Is, I think it's satisfying. So we try U substitution. If we tried our U substitution, we... It, that wouldn't get us anywhere because the du is going to be 5x to the fourth, and we don't know what that value is. Again, that's the issue that we run into. But now we're left with this. Again, if we have to uh, make the left side equal to the right side, that means that the a plus e is our only constant. And all the other values, let's start off with the value in front of the x. That's negative a plus e plus d. That should equal to 0. And then the values in front of the x squared, a plus d plus c, should equal to 0. And then we have negative a plus c plus b is equal to 0. And then we have the last one, which was, I believe, just a plus b. a plus b is equal to 0. So now you kind of have to start messing around with this. OK? Uh, I think we can do, for example, if I remember correctly, I did uh, a was equal to 1 minus e. And that helped me rewrite this equation to negative 1 minus e plus e plus d is equal to 0, which meant negative 1 plus 2e plus d is equal to 0. So 2e plus d is equal to 1. And now we kind of have to continue playing with that and seeing how we can uh, solve this equation. So we have an e and a d. Uh, what else can we do? You guys seeing a little trick there? This is what I keep saying. Like, it's just super frustrating how this problem comes about. Uh, let's play with the uh, E and D. Well, you know what? I guess we can play with the third equation. Let's just continue playing with that and see where that leads us. So A is equal to 1 minus E plus d plus c is equal to 0. Ah, now we have an equation with both d and c's. So that's kind of uh, annoying. However, we can use the equation that we found to get d is equal to 1 minus 2e. And we can plug that in for the d in that equation that we were just working with. So that's going to lead us to 1 minus e plus 1 minus 2e plus c is equal to 0. Geez, guys, still doesn't lead us anywhere. Because that gives us negative 3e plus c is equal to negative 2. Y'all see that? So should I abandon this method and give you the answer using Jamal's theorem? Or should we try something else? What do you guys think? I want to know in the chat. Just, you know what, forget about it. Let's just do something else. Or go ahead and use Jamal's method or Jamal's theorem. because it's kind of hard to find the values here. Or should we try u sub instead? I am willing to do whatever the chat feels like is the best method. Okay. Wow. Write the matrix and solve it. Ooh, that's interesting. Well, we are in the matrix, but I don't know how to write the matrix. All this math to get no women, that's funny. I am married. Okay, so let's go ahead and try Demoff's theorem. I'm just going to show you guys because this will give you the answer. This is the answer to the integral of 1 over x to the fifth plus 1. Let me erase this again. As you can see, so time consuming. And even then, we're going to be left with that crazy integral that just doesn't work or it can't be factored out. Just super annoying. So I'm going to start off from the very beginning. You just wait. Check this out. Integral of 1 over x to the fifth plus 1. Remember the last time? We're going to go ahead and find the roots. That's x to the fifth is equal to negative 1. And according to Demolve's theorem, negative 1 is here on the negative real axis. And so that means that this is equal to e to the i pi plus 2 pi n. 
And so that means that x to the fifth is equal to i, or e to the i, pi plus 2 pi n. And we're going to take the fifth root of that. And according to this, x is equal to e to the i, pi over 5 plus 2 pi n over 5. <laughs> Going to MATLAB. Yeah, but again, that's all computerized. We're trying to do this by hand. That's the fun part. All right. So remember, if n is equal to 0, then x is equal to just e to the i pi over 5. If n is equal to 1, x is equal to e to the i 3 pi over 5. n is equal to 2, x is equal to e to the i pi n is equal to 3, x is equal to e to the i 7 pi over 5, and then we got the last one, n is equal to 4, x is equal to e to the i, uh, this will be 9 pi over 5. And again, if we did n is equal to 5, it would just recycle or um, uh, cycle back to the very beginning. So these are our roots. So then this integral, 1 over x to the fifth plus 1, can be rewritten as 1 over x minus all these roots, because these are technically the roots. Although some are complex roots, that's OK. x minus i pi. If you notice, that x minus i pi, that's the x plus 1, which is really nice. That's the only one that we know. And then we got the other two, x minus e to the i 7 pi over 5, and then x minus e to the i 9 pi over 5. And if you guys were here, don't forget your dx. The only non-complex solution to the bottom is going to be negative 1, or a non-complex 0. OK, so let me make this smaller. If you guys were here in the very beginning of the chat, we talked about De Morphe's theorem. Again, I do record these. I upload them on YouTube so you can see the previous method of how I did this. But now we're going to use partial fractions, and if you recall, the partial fractions or the solution to this, literally the solutions were just 1 over, and it was a, a, a pattern of values times the ln of the root. So this is going to be our solution. I think, if anything, my space is too small. So we have five terms that we're going to create, and I'm about to show you those values. So remember, the first term, and th these are all sums. So the integral of 1 over x to the fifth plus 1 is going to equal to natural log of x minus e to the i pi over 5 all over e to the i pi over 5 whoops, minus every single pattern, e to the i 3 pi over 5, e to the i pi over 5 minus e to the i pi times x, whoops, e to the i pi over 5 minus e to the i 7 pi over 5. And then we got the last one, which doesn't even fit, e to the pi over 5 minus e to the i 9 pi over 5. That's the first term. And now we continue. Plus, I think that fits, natural log of x minus e to the i 3 pi over 5 all over these values e to the i 3 pi over 5 minus e to the i pi over 5 times e to the i 3 pi over 5 minus e to the i pi times e to the i 3 pi over 5 minus e to the i 7 pi over 5 and then e to the i 3 pi over 5 minus e to the i 9 pi over 5. And that continues for the next one, x minus e to the i pi all over every single term I'm just gonna put I'm just gonna put pattern hopefully you guys can see that if not I can discuss that later on and then we have x minus I uh, 7 pi over 5 over pattern plus natural log of x minus e to the 9 pi over 5 all over pattern and then plus c. That's that long, dumb integral of 1 over x to the fifth plus 1. 
And then Johnny said X. Maybe I missed an X somewhere on there. But anyway, that is the integral of 1 over X to the 5th plus 1. Fridays are off trails. I We just cover whatever we feel like. On Tuesdays, we do integration B, where we actually do stuff that you can see in calculus A, B, calculus B, C, maybe some calc 3. On Thursdays, we do something very um, specific. So if it's U substitution, last time we were doing Taylor series. And then Fridays are just for off trails. So we do any type of math um, that, we, that we choose. So I have a few more minutes to do, or a few more minutes to be on here. You posted the real solution right on. Okay, cool. Tag me on it. That'd be amazing. Thank you. There's anything that you guys want to review? Uh, I believe there was someone that wanted to do an integral. Let me go ahead and look for that. Someone said at the very end, can you do... Uh, someone asked... Oh, I can't find it in the chat. But if you guys have anything that you guys wanted to see... Or if you guys wanted to do, please let me know. Let's see. Integral of square root of tan x. Okay. Any suggestions, guys? On what we could do here? I actually never done this one before, so I'm curious what this will be. What I feel, hmm. Okay, so someone's saying to turn it into a sine over a cosine. Let's try that. I actually have never done this one before. So are we saying this integral of sine x over cosine x? Okay. Oh, this one's interesting. Okay, so someone said change of variables. So you mean like integration by parts maybe? Christian, I feel like you're you're definitely uh, thinking of... Where did you get this uh, this integral from? I don't think I've seen it before, but I'm curious. Can we use the, the Weierstrass substitution? Huh. I'm very interested in that. What could we change it to? Can we do... Okay, huh. What are you guys thinking? Because this one doesn't seem to work. Let's try... Okay, let's erase this real quick. Let's see. How about we try use substitution? Will that work? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll definitely look into that solution. But anyway, again, I don't know how to s solve this one, but I'm just going to try it real quick. So I'm just going to square both sides and get tan x. And then, uh, let's see, 2u du is equal to secant squared x dx. I don't think that's going to help us much, but let's just try it out. Over secant squared x is equal to dx. And so that gives us... Uh, this is our u value times our dx is 2u du all over secant squared x. Hmm. So I'm going to pull the 2 outside and get u squared du all over secant squared. This is interesting. Uh, let's see. We know secant squared. Uh, can we try this one? Let's see. If we examine our u squared again, can we square it and make it tan squared? And I believe we can use one of the Pythagorean identities. Uh, which one is that? That's So we know tan squared plus 1 is equal to secant squared. So then we can turn, we can turn this u to the fourth into secant squared minus 1. Well, we're trying to find the secant squared. I'm sorry. Sorry, since we're here, we square both sides. So that means that tan squared, uh, sorry, u to the fourth, whoops, u to the fourth is equal to, u to the fourth plus one is equal to secant squared. 
So that's going to be real nice because we're going to be able to plug that in here on the bottom. So now we have 2 integral of u squared over u to the 4th plus 1 du. Huh. Yeah, no, I agree. This one's definitely uh, really hard to solve. So let's see. I mean, I think like, I feel like we're on this track. So, oh, this so reminds me of uh, kind of like the other integrals that we were working with. Um, so now we're, we're left with this integral here, integral of u squared over u to the fourth plus one, which looks nice, but I feel like that's not, that's not going to be as, as pleasant as we actually think it's going to be. Can we use, I'm just going to get crazy, and I don't even know if this actually works, but can we somehow make this like u cubed to the power of, hmm, oh, I want to make it u cubed. No, it doesn't work here because we can't do another u substitution. Dang, that's a really interesting one. So we're kind of like just stuck here on this particular step, u squared over u to the fourth plus one. And I'm curious, does anyone in the chat want to chime in and see what we can do from here? Christian, that was a good problem. It's always interesting when people throw problems at you and you try to solve them that you realize, ugh. Oh, shoot. Wait, 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 wait. I think some people have ideas. Some people have ideas. Uh, 10 to the negative 1. I feel like we are on the right track, but you to the... Can we u squared? Okay, that's exactly what I was thinking. Okay, so let's try that. So Christian was saying if we do 2 integral of u squared over u squared squared plus 1, it looks like you're right. Maybe we can do integration by parts. So let's go ahead and simplify this or make our work a little smaller here. Let's shrink this bad boy. And let's go ahead and use integration by parts. Wow, that is really unique. So we can use, I already used u, so I'm going to use w is equal to, I guess, u squared. And then dw is equal to 2u du. And then dv, what we have to integrate, is 1 over u squared plus 1. No, wait, wait, wait. We need that u. Hold on. I think I'm just going to use u. You're going to see why I'm just using u. Okay, so we're left with u here. Whoops. That's a u, guys. So dw is equal to du. And then dv is equal to, we need that squared. So it's u over u squared plus 1 squared. So then dv is equal to, this is almost like a, a 1 half arctan of u squared over 1. Yo. Yo, this is crazy. So then this becomes 2, and then the whole thing. So we have 1 half u arctan u squared minus 1 half integral of arctan u squared over 1, oh, du. But then we have to integrate that la that second part. Or do, you already, do you, we already know what that is? No, we don't. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. And then we have to integrate this a little more. That's the, that's the tough part. I don't really want to integrate r10 of u squared because we're going to have to do another integration by parts, unfortunately. Would that put me back in that same position? It would, wouldn't it? Okay, I have a few more minutes. I'm going to try this real quick. But if anyone else has suggestions, please let me know. But I think, unfortunately, well, first let me just go ahead and, and uh, distribute that too. So this is just going to be u arctan of u squared minus an integral of arctan of u squared du. Uh, we're not going to be able to tamble sides because of that integral. 
But let's see. I think we're – let's just try this, unfortunately. Oh, my goodness. So uh, for this next one, we're going to have to use integration by parts again. And I think I'm going to be left back with the same problem. But we'll see. So this is 2u over u to the fourth plus 1. And then dv is just equal to du. And then v is equal to u. So this is u arctan of u squared minus – and then we have u arctan of u squared. Yeah, that cancels out. Dang it. That's not going to work because that's going to cancel everything out. Let me just continue it so we can see it. Minus integral of u to u squared over u to the fourth plus 1 du. And that basically just cancels out because if we distribute the negative sign, it cancels out here. And then this just becomes the original integral that we were working with. So I fear if we were on the right track, we just had to do something else. That's kind of a bummer. So vectors, yeah, you're definitely going to use vectors, but not so much like in Calc 1 or Calc 2. Um, if you are studying like physics and engineering, you'll for sure see vectors, but it's like a whole separate field of stuff. Dang it. All right. Well, Christian said that you can look this up online, which I definitely will, but this is a, an interesting one. And I'm curious if you could have solved it differently. Um, but unfortunately, that is all I have for today. What is the hardest field of math, in my opinion? I think it's going to be uh, topology. Didn't really like that very much. I think analysis just in general, trying to prove stuff can be, um, can be a bummer. Thank you, Christian. Yeah, I gave it my best, but I'm kind of stumped on here. And if we had a little bit more time, I would definitely try to attempt it a little more. But I like it. I like it. I like that we got stuck on something and we have time to review it. We can watch videos on it and just learn from this. So this is always fun. Anyway, so I do have to get going, but don't forget that I am on here every Tuesday. Next week, we're going to do another integration B. Thursday, we're going to do something specific. So we'll cover either use substitution, maybe some product rule, maybe some Taylor series. And then Friday is always off trail. So we might do some contour integrals or line integrals or... Um, residue theorem i think that'd be really fun something to talk about later on anyway guys well i hope you guys have a great weekend hope you enjoy your friday uh i'll see you guys next tuesday around the same time integration be looking forward to that until then take it easy keep mathing <laughs>